I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. <clears throat> We're in the third uh, half hour of interviewing Sean McCraney. I appreciate him coming and sharing his story with us. We're learning some new things and, and also uh, inviting people that have uh, maybe never really watched or paid attention to Sean to know about a book called I Was a Born Again Mormon. If my kingdom were of this world, my, then my servants would fight. And then a comparative of Mormonism meeting biblical Christianity. Excellent books and I think they help guide people along at least thinking about this process of coming out of Mormonism into Christianity. And you, as we ended up last week, you kind of started talking about this opportunity you had to do a TV show here in Salt Lake City, of all places. Of all places. I was still going to school of ministry in Southern California, uh, and um, Michelle Ermel, she heard of Born Again Mormon website, 10 hits a month, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she just contacted me, she read the book, and then she, her husband, Denny, managed, managed TV20 here in Salt Lake. K Kim and I have been on KT TV20. KTMW, yeah. KTMW. Yeah. And uh, so Pastor Greg Johnson, or Reverend Greg Johnson, <laughs> he uh, was in Utah and he was doing a show on 20. And so they worked it out, hey, you can be a guest on Greg's show. And uh, so we flew up there. I flew up here, and uh, Greg had me on the show. And they had such a great response from the book, Born Again Mormon. We offered to give, like, the first three callers to the book. Copy, and and I got, think a lot of 30. people started calling. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. And that Denny Armel later came and he said, do you want to try your own show? And, you know, uh, it made perfect sense. I was... Broke. Yeah. I was living in Southern California. I was in school. Yeah. Uh, I'd never done TV before. Made and perfect sense. Perfect right? sense. So we said okay. And so uh, in Mar in December of 2005, we started building the set out of old barn wood that was found in a trash can, and we built the set. And I wanted it to be very eye like, catching. Eye catching. Thank yeah. you. I know. I know. Eye catching. Eye catching. Yeah. When people are flipping through the channels, what's with this guy? Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. And that did work. It did. And uh, then in March of 2006, we went live. Yeah. It was a live call-in show for an hour a night. And I'm very grateful to the Ermels uh, for uh, taking the chance, yeah. uh, sticking their neck out. The show was very controversial in an LDS community. Sure. Um, so it was a wonderful thing. But there's been a lot of response from it. I mean, and you were on there, and of course the t television station's been sold now, but you were on there through 2013. Through 2012. To 12, yeah. the very first, first one. In, yeah. In 2013. Yeah. So we were on, I think, 20 for a total of seven years. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You had like 340 or so episodes and yeah. so on. So do you, uh, I know there were a couple of that I looked back on and saw some. Do you remember a fellow named Don that said Jesus is a Mormon? Oh, yeah. Jesus is a Mormon. Jesus is a Mormon. You can't pay for stuff better than that. Yeah, you'd say that sometimes. Oh. Like, oh, yeah, I can't pay for this. There was also a couple that came on once named Debbie and Todd. And Debbie said, 
you said that Joseph Smith took young wives, you, oh. Sean, saying that. And Todd came on and said, he never said that. That's not true. And so it's funny now that the essays have come out and yeah. shown that the church actually does admit that Joseph Smith had that. One thing, though, that always struck me about your presentation, you, you had a TV persona. Mm. And I hope people are seeing a different side of you now because I think you're a soft-hearted person. Mm. I think you're actually someone who is, is humble, seeking. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to get this to, to sound, in, uh, sound too much, but just that I, I have, a, I've always had the sense that you have this basic desire to serve God, mm. to seek truth, no matter at what cost. Mm -hmm. Tradition isn't important, religion isn't important, mm -hmm. but just to seek truth. And you always said when some of these people called in that it, your heart broke for them. Mm. What did you mean by that? Well, uh, you know, when people are trapped in anything, whether it's meth or a prison or a cycle of destruction or religion, it's sad to me. Yeah. I value freedom very, very highly. And so when you can hear that they yearn to know and they're trapped, it's, that's heartbreaking. And there's not much you can do yeah. except pray, you know. And you tell them, you tell them, I love you. Yeah. I do love you. Yeah. I, and one of the things that kind of came out of my in research a little bit was this phrase, don't pull out the rug of the LDS without sharing Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that came from, whether you said it or maybe John DeLynn did or somebody, but. Mm. What do you think of that phrase? Uh, I, I think it's so vitally important in this day and age especially yeah. that with the LDS kind of stepping forward and saying, okay, this is what our history is. This is what we believe. Here's a seer stone. Here's polygamy. Here's, yeah. uh, that we really want them to know the solution. I mean, we really want them to know the eternal truths of Jesus Christ. N nothing else really matters. Yeah, you know? I agree. <laughs> if they're going to remain Mormon and never know Jesus, well, remain Mormon. I mean, or remain Catholic and never know Jesus, well, stay Catholic. It doesn't matter what you'd really do, yeah. you know. But if we can get you to understand who he is and be free in him, yeah. that's just, uh, just a marvelous message. And Mormons have a built-in uh, problem because they don't trust the Bible in the first place. Yeah. And I know that, again, I'm repeating this from last week, but uh, read the manual. This, yeah. is your, this is your book. Yeah. And this is what you trust, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah. It starts opening windows in, in your mind and things when you see it. But yeah. we, we, we shut down anything that is going to confront us. And so sometimes even reading the Bible as an act of Latter-day Saint, we just are able to see Mormonism all through it. Oh, I know it. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the things I did when I got the Red Letter Bible, mm. and I read just the words of Jesus, mm. and then I started reading Paul. And, well, they're not talking about three degrees of glory and, no. and temple marriage and baptism no. for the dead and stuff. No. Yeah. So when did you, did, I guess you learned a lot going through these first few months and years of TV20. Oh, I learned so much. Yeah. Preparing, Just preparing, delivering, even. yeah, and uh, and honestly, I don't know. Um, it's all God. We say that it sounds sort of like know. you know knee jerk, I know. but it really, it really was. Yeah. It really is. It's yeah. all Him. And you were trying to praise Him through through that show and and helping LDS understand. Did you have other responses? Do you remember other calls that were particularly memorable? Remember John O'Fallon, I guess. John right? O'Fallon was an immortal caller simply because. He, he was not with. He was without guile. He yeah. simply yeah. said he how said, it was. Now I kind of date myself because uh, to to where I started listening to you because of John, mm. and but I could hear myself making mm. that same phone call. Wow! Because he wouldn't let his wife watch the show, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He would not. He told her not to watch. Uh huh. It. Yeah. And he cast. He cast. I think he cast me out by the power. Well, of the I do think he threw a priesthood thing at you. <laughs> And you said, oh, I'm waiting for something to happen. <laughs> yeah. never, nothing ever did. Yeah. So many, so many memories looking back, but I really don't, I don't uh, live too much in the past oh, on sure. anything. It's yeah. always what we can do now. I know, but I'm forcing you to. There that. you are. <laughs> uh, response from the Christian community? Um, 
the response initially from the pastors and people in the state where we don't need his kind of help. That's a quote. Oh, yeah. There was a, a pushback against the station. I wanted to call the show uh, the Born Again Mormon Hour. Oh, did you really? Yeah. At the beginning. And uh, Denny uh, said, no, it's, you got to come up with something else. Did you come up with Heart and of the Matter? I was working as a security guard and heard Don Henley's song, Heart of the Matter, and said, Serious well, from the Eagles. Yeah. And that's where it came from. Yeah, that's where it came from. Because oh, I, I couldn't think of anything else. Really wanted Heart of the, I really wanted Born Again Mormon, but uh, because I really do believe in that premise. Well, I do to too. To get the LDS to become born again through yeah. the Spirit. A great question to ask them. Yeah. Have you been born again? Such a good question. Yeah. In fact, to those and who what want... What does that mean to be yeah, born again? Yeah. Have you experienced... When a woman gives birth, she's not in those syrups for her life. No. It's an instantaneous thing. Yeah. We might experience it differently. Right. So you, those who are watching your program, to let you know, you're going to experience it differently than you have or I have, but have you been? Yeah. You know, it's an imperative, Jesus said. You must be. You must be born again. Yeah. To see, even see the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you did say at one point that the love method doesn't work on TV. Yeah. Uh, TV is a different kind of animal. What I sensed, too, was that if I say, someone says, well, I believe in Jesus, and then you say, oh, well, good, then we all believe in Jesus. Yeah. Or I believe in... Yeah. Yeah. What, so... It, truth, uh, who was it? Emerson, who said, uh, peace if possible, but truth always. Yeah. And I think Jesus lived by that. Uh, he's always going to tell you the truth. But it's in love. Yeah. And people mix that up, especially with my TV delivery, because I am uh, sarcastic, I'm acerbic, and I'm on, I'm, I'm purposely do that so that I can cause some kind of reaction in people. Yeah. Because LDS, having come from them, I know that if I am just so kind to them and so nice and I never cause them anger, well, we agree. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. But we've seen tens of thousands come out of the church from the method. Yeah. So. Uh, well, and, and you always said that, in a way, if, if this is exposing the heart of the Mormon. Yeah. The way you dress, your yeah. hair. Yeah. I mean, you were criticized for weight, yeah. for your hair, for. Everything. Uh, everything. Everything yeah. possible. And you could have worn the white shirt and tie. Sure. And you could have looked like a good little Mormon yeah. boy. Could have. Could yeah. have approached it that way. Was told to approach it that were way. You? Yeah. That this is what will sell here. Yeah. But I think something's important, and that is we were not out. In fact, to have any influence on you coming out at all is amazing to me because you are the prototypical good guy, and you're not a big sinner. And there's people who are not big sinners, you know? Yeah. And that's tough to reach them. That's the miracle. Yeah, I, when you say you kind of really not approach, you didn't figure you'd touch many of the staunch no. true blue Mormons. No. That, that it was going to be the seekers, the ones that never really found their place in Mormonism, yeah. couldn't keep the commandments. Right. Those are the ones that you were going to attract. Right. And that's the ones we have attracted. So I do praise God because I, I don't know what, I mean, I think it was watching it Tuesday night till Carla came home from the water aerobics and then watching at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. I guess you knew that it got yep. replayed. And just getting that message, read the Bible, trust Jesus. Mm. You know, I think that over a period of time, and I started seeing some of the problems of Mormonism. You'd point those out too, and I'd check those out. Mm. I'd also had my own concerns about the first vision and mm -hmm. Book of Abraham and the versions of the first vision. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just a couple of other, I know you were attacked constantly. Why are you bashing the yeah. church? You probably still get that when people yeah. watch clips on the, on yeah. YouTube and stuff. Basher. Yeah. yeah. And Jesus never did that. Oh, they love that one. <laughs> yeah. All they got to do is read Matthew 23, the entire chapter, yeah. and they're going to be proven wrong on that. Vipers and... Uh, yeah, vipers and <laughs> hypocrites, and how are you going to escape damnation? Whited, and whited sepulchers. Whited sepulchers. <laughs> Uh, I like the one, don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of things better to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's funny. Anything else you remember particularly about your time there? It was wonderful in the sense that it, it, it impacted a lot of people, and I'm sure you've heard from yeah. so many. Yeah, it was a blessing to be part of it, and uh, it's still part of our ministry, really, worldwide because of the video. I was telling my daughter Delaney the other day that, 
we looked up YouTube started and I think in 2005 Did it just and right in 2006 we when you and someone show. put our stuff on YouTube we didn't yeah. even do it I didn't even know what it was so it was right in that period where it was getting out there yeah. video was getting out there to the world and it was really a timely thing yeah. that it worked that way now, I don't know if we should mention names but I know you had a, a young lady named Wendy who's done a lot of putting things on internet for you she's done a lot today to really get a lot done for and us people and, uh, that yeah. get out there and, and they, you've had a lot of other supporters too yes Der Derek wonderful and Danita the Webster's the Webster's I don't want to even hardly start mentioning names but if you care to uh, I would people. I'd like to mention some names the, the Webster's Derek and Danita keep have kept the ministry running uh, you know and I was criticized by a Christian once uh, for uh, for asking Derek to do what he did they told me I needed somebody who was more um, ensconced in Christian history, etc. And I was like, really? I, and he has been such a, they oh, have been such a blessing unbelievable. to us. Yeah. yeah. And keep everything running that I don't, which is everything. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, of course, grateful to the family and, and uh, very grateful to Merle. Hodel, who has yeah. been with us from the beginning. Kathy Maggie, who's been with us from the beginning. Linda Cassidy. Yeah. And then... Uh, Seth. Uh, Seth Motor has yeah. done wonderful things video-wise. Wendy Jensen, great things on the internet. And then Cassidy with all her clips. Mallory with her music. The Erskins. <laughs> and taking oh. taking this show. I, I, I hadn't looked at your site. I told you this. But I just looked at I could not believe what you've done. You know, and that's the thing. You've just taken and you have made all these interviews uh, available. You didn't need to. You, you didn't have to step out. And how many people now are watching those and changing? This is how it works. It's a I beautiful guess. thing. A little seat at a time. Yeah. And All from Charles Stanley. That's right. Yeah. Who <laughs> would have ever guessed? And we watch him regularly still. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so some other memorable ones. I know you had a man in white once who did he dress in the church stuff and he walked wore around all the his temple, temple guard and yeah. walked around the temple. Yeah. Uh, you had a fellow named Christopher Namelka on who... That brought such a really difficult spirit to the set. One of the things that I thought was most important about that was not him, mm. but the fact that here's a person who can act as a prophet, mm. and if anyone follows him, and this is what you were trying to think, I think yeah. the sarcasm or the hypocrisy of that, yeah. how can you trust any man? Exactly. You know, yeah. Cannot trust man. Yeah. You what that. was funny when you when I asked you if I could do the 17 minutes and you said oh, I could give you six minutes and I started well it was getting up to 12 and 14 and I and then I said Sean don't you want to read the script and you said no I I trust you or I, I said something well I appreciate you trusting me he said well I don't trust you I trust God <laughs> and that really struck me like oh, yeah yeah he, he trusts God amen yeah any did you ever hear from the church at all LDS we did. Church. We heard from, about John O'Fallon, the church. Uh, from, oh, yeah. They called and said, listen, he's not representing us properly. The PR department called. And I said, to me, I don't think he said anything that is not representing you properly. It's in our hearts, Yeah, is what he was saying. Yeah. But you're right. He was just honest and would say things that, Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then put a curse on you or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, I heard from him on that. One thing I liked about the TV20 program was it was fair, again, balanced. One of the things that you did, and I tried to find it, I think it's maybe episode 85, but I'm not mm. sure. You said, are they Christians? But yeah. You did a chart where you had five columns, and it went from where things that we agree on, things that we might, well, let's let them have it. You were even willing to give the Mormons, and this was impactful for me because I was still an active Mormon at this mm. point. And you said, well, let's... Let them have the Book of Mormon. Sure. Let them have three degrees of glory. Mm -hmm. Let them have marriage for time and all eternity. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really matter. I mean, so what? Mm -hmm. As long as they've turned their lives to Christ. But then you got over to the things that they really were mm -hmm. opposite with. What do you remember about that uh, chart? Sure. Yeah, that was, that was uh, that's my heart. It always has been. Yeah. It still is today. Uh, I'm considered a little too liberal in that sense, but I really believe that we are all scrambling to understand God in our ways. So if any of our little deals, I mean, Christians have Pilgrim's Progress, and yeah. I, do they know Jesus as the I am? Do, have they been born again? Yeah. Uh, everything else, we are pretty 
we like what we do, you know, and so that's why we did that. I just, I just wanted to say, look at, okay, you can, even the temple, you want to do that? I don't know. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> to me, it's just crazy. But do you, the final thing, do you know, do you know him? Jesus. Yeah. And that's where they're lacking. Yeah. Well, maybe we should jump in. I know there's only a few minutes left. Uh, not sure exactly what we have, but you have been controversial lately. But again, it, it, it seems to me that the things you approach are with honesty. Mm. And again, there's core issues that you believe, and then everything else is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. And w none of us know mm -hmm. really everything or anything in yeah. some ways. And the Bible can be, can be <laughs> discussed in different ways. So how, how do you discuss and talk about say, maybe some of these controversial things that you brought up? I, I am considered controversial by uh, orthodoxy uh, in, within Christianity um, because I do believe I have some I have some views about how I read the Bible and understand it by the Spirit. Um, but I want to say that I respect people who are Trinitarians or people who are modalists and that they well that's just not acceptable. But we aren't saved because we're Trinitarians or modalists. Or what our belief in hell is. No, we're not yeah. saved by those things, and we don't walk the Christian walk on those doctrines. Right. I really firmly believe that doctrine divides. And I think that doctrine, we aren't saved by doctrine. It helps us. We grow in Christ with it. I welcome anybody's, you know, Christian views with you know, them reason, you know. But do we have faith and do we love? That is the core message that I can agree upon with anybody. If we can agree on it, do we have faith in, in God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and, and do we love? I'm going to differ with you just like everybody's going to differ with everybody else yeah. in something. Yeah. yeah. And I think God really made it that way. You do. Yeah. Even this whole thing with the creation and the flood, sure. as simple as that ought to be yeah. to understand, there's a wide divide wide on divide. who believes this and who believes that. Yeah, and I think but Satan loves important. division. I guess so. The wide divide. And he wants us to keep a camp because collectively together in faith and love, we're a dangerous posse. But when we start saying, oh, I'm going to sit here and here and here and here, and then we start pointing fingers at each other, I've learned, I've grown, I have pointed enough fingers in my life, I've done enough dividing in my life, I'm not ecumenical. I don't believe there are many roads that lead to heaven. I believe Jesus is the only way to heaven. By grace, through faith in Him that God gave us His Son. That's it. The actual makeup, Trinitarians may be right. Modalists may be right. I, I, I'm not smart enough to know. Well, and the answers aren't that clear. They're not that clear. And so to be dogmatic about anything in particular yeah. is, is, is not... Yeah safe or yeah. it's not wise and I can't say whatever God decides whatever he says whatever the final thing is on eternal punishment or his makeup or anything I'm bowing you know I am bowing I'm sorry I did the best I could um, but I just think that the conversation is important for people coming out of the Mormon church if I kind of see it like this do we have time really quickly yeah I see it like this in Utah or in Mormonism, everybody's driving the M Mormon car, the M Mercedes. All Mormons drive the Mormon car, the Mercedes. Right. And, and then everybody else is trying to get the Mormons to get rid of their M Mercedes and drive the C Chevrolet, the Christian the car. The Christian Chevrolet. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just, you're either that or you're this. And to me, that or you're this is, is every type of model of car. It's not just the yeah. Trinitarian Chevrolet. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and, and I know that's very liberal to people, but I don't think God has made it clear enough for us to say it is this. That's my only point. Could be wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was when I've told others in my family too, I said, this Christianity is tough. It is tough. You actually have to start thinking out mm. here. I mm. mean, as a Mormon, I never had to think. It was all done for me. Everybody had written it out for 130, 80 years, whatever it is. And uh, and so I didn't have to think, yeah. and I, they told me what to believe, and I believed it. Yeah. When you yeah. get out in Christianity, you have to start thinking, and, and people have been doing this for a couple of thousand years now, so there's been many opinions. And right. They've come in and they've come out. Yeah. So, 
But I appreciate the, the fact that you uh, allow us as those that listen to you and follow you or, or anyone that does that, the freedom to choose. You've, you've said many times, I'm not going to be standing there with, with no. you. When, when Don't you go, believe me. Yeah. On anything. Yeah. yeah. I really believe that. Don't trust me. No. Don't, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be there with you yeah. uh, when, God, when you meet with God. And, and I'm firmly committed, uh, Earl, to the idea that we are all responsible before him. And we will, maybe it's my Kierkegaardian existentialist background, but I do believe we will be responsible for what we decided to believe, what we said to do, and how we did that. And I think finger pointing, well, he taught me this, and I think we know. That's the spirit is teaching us. Why was I lazy, so lazy that yeah. I wouldn't check things out? Yeah. I mean, people that haven't read for themselves or haven't studied, Yeah. they... Um, and that's what was so irritating, really, as Mormon, that I carry that quad to church every week. I didn't know what those verses in the Bible meant. Yeah. And I looked at all those underlined as a missionary, all the scriptures I underlined, and yeah. never anything about grace or anything. No. Well, we've only got now a couple of minutes. Uh, can you share a little of your witness and what you'd share about our Lord and Savior? i just like to make a final plea to anyone who does not believe there is God, know there is God, have a relationship with God, uh, to not believe Earl or I or your pastor or your bishop or your prophet or your pope, <laughs> um, but to go to him directly. Go to him directly. And you're going to do this in faith. And you're going to say, you show me. Show me you're there. I, let me know somehow that you're there. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my heart. Open my ears. Show me. You show me. And uh, wait on him. And he'll do it. That's my, that's my petition. Well, and I don't think anything could be better said. Yeah. Um, but the LDS, they just resist. They resist. They want, I'm really anti-institutional. They want their power. They want their money. They want their tithes. I'm sorry, I have very little patience for the upper upper leaders. Uh, I think they know a lot, don't you? I think they know a lot. And they're scrambling. And they are the scrambling. Internet's really affected because of shows like this. Well, and yours, yeah. and and things of the the sear stone, and these are the things that come along that really rattle. Though I'd be interested to hear what those brethren talk about. Oh yeah. Well, Sean, it's been a pleasure to have you for these last couple of weeks and your story and uh, pleasure's all mine yeah appreciate your friendship and uh, good luck in all you do thanks my brother uh, and appreciate it and we'll see you again here on the ex-mormon files